It is the 21st of June 2017 and that can mean only one thing. It is time to discuss episode 12 of Boruto, Boruto and Mitsuki. So I'm going to do a bit of a different kind of format this time. As someone did point out in my previous uh, video in the comment section, I was kind of veering into the area of recapping the episode, not actually discussing or analysing it, which is true. Uh, so... Hopefully this one will feel a little more like a review and less that I'm just basically relaying the story back to you. And hopefully I'll do it in one take because it's incredibly warm today. It is probably the hottest day of the year and I've had to turn the fan off for this so I may take several pauses to pass out. Without further ado though, let's get on to it. So this episode, as you'd imagine, is quite Mitsuki focused and generally speaking I thought it was pretty cool. It shed some light on characters and stuff that I wasn't really expecting. So obviously we see that, you know, Mitsuki's uh, talking to the secret snake person or wherever it is kind of start off the episode and kind of set the mood as well because this is very uh, Mitsuki focused as you'd imagine. Also near the start of the episode so this got me thinking a little actually because so right at the start they're doing some training thing and they go in three-man teams and the three-man team is Boruto, Mitsuki and Denki. Obviously because they haven't been put in the team yet that we see in Boruto the movie. But it does raise a question actually what happens to Denki because I don't remember seeing him in the movie so I'm not sure whether they gonna go a different direction with the anime and introduce more characters whereas Boruto was kind of a what if or a possibility kind of thing maybe this is their actual canon or something obviously Denki's not going to be in their team we know that for sure but it'll be interesting to see what happens to him obviously I don't think he dies although he could do I have a feeling he's going to go off and work for that technology firm that we see Boruto gets mixed up with in the movie. But either way, at the moment, it's kind of nice to see Denki around. I do like technology-based characters in anime. I just got a thing for that. So I like that Denki's kind of representing the modern kind of face of the ninja world, and he's not just another shinobi. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Obviously, I am watching Boruto, so I shouldn't really be disappointed when there are more ninjas. And I just gotta, I gotta ask, so right at the end of that training thing, this guy showed up that Boruto was looking at, he looks like, he looks like he's 40 but also a child, it's a really weird uh, combination there, I don't know who that is, is he like, is he the offspring of someone we know, he's, he's got might eyes eyebrows, but sure, might guy, not might eye, what am I on about, but surely might guy hasn't had a kid, has he, or maybe, and on the topic of kids, there's also a screenshot that I took with what looks like Kakashi's son again. This is more of a kind of close-up view of him. So obviously we don't know any more than just a brief screenshot, but he really does look like Kakashi's son. Now, on the topic of that actually, I was playing uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. There is a part in one of the three adventure modes in Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 where one of the side missions is getting a present for Kakashi to send to the owner of a prison castle thing. And I think it's implied that he is romantically invested with her. So I think he does end up with someone and obviously has a child. But I'm just curious to know if the owner of that prison is someone we've ever met in the anime before or if not. Obviously, this will come into focus later on, but he's got a kind of cool design. I kind of like him. He looks really cute, which is a bit confusing. And then next up, like midway through the episode, we get a view into Class Rep's history or backstory when she was little. And there's that weird creepy person that's kind of bandaging her or something. It's left very vague, but it's definitely implied that she has quite a dark past. And then a little later on, Mitsuki going to visit her in the hospital, starts talking about her parents, and she mentions that they've all died, that she lives on her own. This is something I wasn't really expecting. I thought class rep was just a little bit quiet and timid, but wow, I didn't expect them to actually go into a kind of sad backstory there. This will probably be expanded upon later, but I'm kind of liking that they're adding depth to all these characters slowly. There's no rush to fulfill an arc or something. They're taking their time and kind of delving into the characters. I kind of like that. I wasn't expecting Boruto to be like that, really. I also just had to add this little shot, which is three adorable pictures of Naruto and his family. I especially like the one on the right. I don't know, it just is 
really nice to see a character that I've grown up with over the years turn into a responsible dad and stuff like that. Just have, a, have some really nice pictures of his family. Near the end of the episode as well, we also get a little view into Mitsuki's history. Now, I don't think this is a shock to anyone who's seen the movie, but obviously Orochimaru is his parent. He does say parent, not parents. So obviously he's a clone of some kind or a genetic offshoot or something. We do get a very brief flash of him in some kind of test tube and being patted on the head at the end. This reminds me a little bit of that famous scene from Pokemon the first movie where Mewtwo is in the test tube. I was kind of expecting Mitsuki to go wild and destroy everything and set fires with his mind or whatever, but he didn't really do that. He just seems pretty uh, complacent in it all. And wow, what a way to end this episode. Mitsuki just straight up telling Boruto he knows who was behind the ghost incident, which we all kind of knew anyway, so this is one hell of a cliffhanger to end it on, because I don't know about you guys, but I know for sure that the main thread of the plot that I've been following the most is Mitsuki's involvement in all of this, because the whole kind of setup for ghosts and stuff, it's cool, it's interesting, I do want to find out exactly why it's happening or whatever, but Mitsuki is the most intriguing character because he seems to both like Naruto and also be leading him on. So I'm really looking forward to seeing where that goes. And talking about seeing where that goes, next time... I can't remember the name of the episode, but it's something about the beast is unleashed or something. And as we can see here, there's a little shot of, well, it's six tails we can see in this shot, but it looks like it's maybe the nine tails or something. I didn't manage to grab a screenshot because it's like a frame or two, but there's a very brief shot as well of Kakashi joining them. So I'm really excited to see that, just Kakashi later on, because as far as I know, I don't think he appeared in Boruto the movie. Or maybe he did and I'm just forgetting it, but I really just want to see more Kakashi. He was easily one of my favourite Naruto characters overall. And this looks quite a dramatic episode as well. It's definitely going to... It's maybe like a mid-arc thing. Obviously, this isn't going to be the end of the arc, but it's probably going to at least introduce the big bad guy that they're after. And honestly, it hasn't taken all that long, within 12 episodes, to kind of get to the main motivation point of an arc. is isn't too bad for a shounen anime, especially as they kind of have to introduce dozens of characters and their motivations and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to next week for sure. Definitely one of the most anticipated Boruto episodes so far. And that about wraps it up for my review today. Hopefully this has felt a little better. As I mentioned at the start, my previous episodes definitely did feel like it was just recapping the episode. It wasn't really adding anything. So hopefully this had a little more flow to it. Let me know in the comment section below if you prefer this style. I know I do, and part of the reason is I don't have to prepare as much because my method of doing my previous reviews was pausing every minute or every time a character said something important and screen capping. But I've realised that obviously people watch this to know other people's opinions on the show and not to just get the episode they just watched recapped. So hopefully this felt a little more natural and a little better. I'm still working on the formula, obviously, so I don't know, I may switch it up again in a couple of weeks' time, but for now I'm kind of liking this thing because I can just talk about the little things I noticed or how I felt about certain scenes. And I'm sure next episode is going to be quite a hotly uh, discussed episode, at least in terms of the Boruto fandom. Is there a strong fandom? I don't seem to be seeing many positive or negative things said about Boruto. I know a lot of people have dropped out because they're like, ugh, more Naruto, they're just milking it and stuff. Which, it's a valid point. I mean, hey, like, if it's not for everyone, I only like it because it kind of adds to the world building and things. But anyway, let me know what you thought of the episode in the comments and how you like this setup. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>